Right, guys, I thought it was about time to uh, reevaluate the uh, remaining uh, power supplies in the Hall of Shame, yeah? So these are the ones that have not actually been looked at so far. Uh, but um, I've learned a few things uh, going through uh, all these repairs, and I'm guessing a few of you have learned a few things as well. And I'm wondering now whether all these are actually faulty, um, based on the fact they probably need testing under load. I mean, these ones, uh, dead, uh, powers on and powers off again, and no output may well be faulty. So we, we, we can we can come to those. I'll put those on one side for a moment. This is number 13, which was the mystery one. So I'm, I forgot to make a note of what the problem was with this one. So we can check that one. And all these ones that say unstable or voltages high and low. Let's uh, get uh, some loads and actually see if they're faulty or not. Yeah, I'll put these three just on one side for now. Okay, so this is number seven. Uh, five volts was unstable. Uh, five volts standby unstable. Maybe this one is uh, faulty. I've put a couple of uh, hard drives on. Uh, these are IDE because there's actually no SATA connections on this. It's quite an old uh, power supply. It's got one of these connectors there. Yeah. Um, no doubt of use for some uh, vintage motherboards, some retro stuff. Um, it has the four-way uh, 12 volt connector as well i'm not going to put these on the light bulb because they've all been powered on before so i doubt any of them actually going to go bang but we'll see now i've said that yeah so uh, first of all let's uh, put this one on and see what it actually does and it does nothing ah yeah th that that problem is actually caused by the fact uh, this switch is switched off yeah so let's switch that on let's just give this some power and see what it actually does okay Yeah, 5 volt standby is unstable on this. Um, it's flashing around 5.4. Whoa, this definitely has a problem on 5 volt standby on this one. I'll just zoom it down a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so you, you can see that there is definitely a problem with this one on 5 volt standby. It's all over the place, yeah. Um, good guess for this is probably going to be capacitors, but that's one we can definitely look at. Um, let's have a look at the next one. So as you can see, num number seven is definitely worth a look, yeah. Uh, let's just uh, disconnect the hard drives off this one and let's uh, get the next one. So that we can we can look at. Uh, next one's going to be number 10, says 5 volts is unstable. Uh, this one again, just has the uh, IDE uh, Molex connectors on. So let's, uh, let's give this a little bit of uh, load, yeah. I'll just zoom the camera out a little bit actually. Okay, so that's uh, ready to connect up. Uh, the last one, uh, and this one, I was looking. All right, this one, I can see here that there are two orange wires coming together into the 3.3 volts here. So we may well have to put a 3.3 volt load on this, the 2 ohm resistor, uh, to be sure. But let's just uh, power on and let's see what she actually does. Yeah, so it's power switched off at the mains at the moment. Uh, so that's that one. Let's power this one up and see what it actually does. That's flashing because I haven't got the four-way connector connected to the, uh, if this one actually has. Uh, yeah, it does have that connector on it. So let's just connect the four-way to here, yeah? Okay. But well, I stopped it bleeping. Uh, so this one now, it, it's fine. I mean, it has the 3.3 volt wandering around a little bit, uh, which we've seen before. So let's connect that 2 ohm resistor on this one. And see if that just stabilizes. So with this, I've just connected the resistor to my meter probes and stuffed them into here. Yeah. If I put the meter on, we can see that we've got 3.3 volts, and then we know we've got a connection, so we must have a connection to the resistor. Yeah. So let's power this up, and it's now stabilized, 3.2 or 3.3. Yeah. So I think we can say number 10 actually isn't faulty. Okay. Another one down. Right, let's get to the next one. Okay, so this is number two, which I was saying 12 volts was high and 5 volts was low, yeah. This one clearly, again, has the brown wire coming to one of the orange. So this is obviously sensing 3.3. So I'm going to connect my resistor to this one. Uh, this one has uh, ID and SATA, so I've connected them both. Um, and we're ready to go with this one. There's a voltmeter in there, so we know we've got a connection 
on the 3.3 let's see what let's just see what it does okay powered up okay this one has a problem we have 3.3 .3 stable but 5 is at 4.6 and 12 is at 13 yeah so that's definitely got issues that one and I've definitely got a connection onto 3.3 .3 onto my resistor so that one we do need to look at yeah Right, so this is number 5, so 5 volts and 3.3 .3 were a bit unstable. Again, this has the brown wire coming down to one of the orange, this is the sense wire. So, um, it's connected again to the uh, ID and SATA hard drives. Um, this one's going to get the uh, resistor put on as well, on the 3.3. .3. Okay, let's just uh, get the meter probe down to one of these grounds there. Again, the power's off at the moment. So it just connects to the power and then we'll we'll switch her on, yeah. Let's see what this one does. Yeah, put so you can see the thing there, yeah. So again this power's up. Three is three point three four. Three point three is wandering around a bit on this one, can you see it? I've seen it to go high, HH, -H, and I've seen it to go to 3.1 as well sometimes. Um, 12's okay. Um, 5 is okay, but this one I think we'll have a look to see if it's a problem, uh, any uh, capacitors in this one, I think, most likely, yeah. So that one we can actually have a look at. Okay, this is the last of the unstable ones, saying 5 volts unstable. Uh, you can see in this one, actually, this has two orange wires coming together into one of the connectors here. So this will be monitored again on the 3.3. .3. So uh, once again, we'll, we'll connect the 2 ohm resistor on this one. So that's the analyzer uh, connected. Uh, this is quite an old uh, power supply, um, just as the uh, IDE uh, connectors on. So let's just give it... Uh, some load on there, connect the two hard drives, just uh, get this out of a knot. Uh, this came off uh, a P4. <laughs> See the silver paint on here? I've still got the motherboard to this, yeah. It's a Pentium 4, uh, 478. So that's what this was for. There's actually a bit of paint on this as well, actually. Uh, somebody obviously got a, they've got a beige PC case, which is now quite sought after. And they'd sprayed it silver with spray paint, yeah. And they left everything inside it while well, they did it. <laughs> and uh, it still works. I mean, the motherboard works, the graphic card works, but um, you can't really sell it. I mean, I just keep. I I know the good bits that you hear for me to use as test. Okay, so that's all connected up on that one. Again, the power's off. Uh, this is an old ATX because so Lucas actually got a power in and out. But it is an ATX, it's not an AT, so that's uh, a little bit unusual in itself. Uh, let's see what this one does then. Let's switch it on. Ah, oh, this is flashing the 12 volts, so I haven't got the 4 pin connected. Let's connect the uh, 4 pin. I'll just uh, switch that off and I'll just move the wires around. Okay, so let's put the uh, 4 pin on that one. Okay, there we go. Again, these are still stuck in there. The meters all tell us if we've got a contact. Oh, that wasn't the power supply. That was my switch. My on-off switch is a little bit dodgy. Okay. 5 volt standby is wandering around on this. 4.9. It's gone high, yeah. So this actually has a problem with the 5 volt standby. Oh, that's what it says, 5 volt standby, yeah. So that one actually is faulty. I suspect capacitors on that one. Yeah. So uh, let's get another one. Okay, so this is number 13, the mystery one, yeah. That I forgot to make a note of what the fault was, but I had marked as faulty. So um, again, I've put the IDE, it does have SATA as well on this one. It has a 6 way and a 12 way, so I've connected both of those. Um, again, I've put the load on the 3.3 .3 because the brown wire is coming in here. So that's obviously the one that's monitoring resistor meter, yeah. So let's just see what uh, this one does. In fact, no, let's, let's connect the power lead to it first, yeah. That's probably a good idea. And now let's see what it does. So we'll switch that on and then we'll just switch this one on. It powers up.
This has all sorts of insta instability, yeah? You can see it. That one's all over the place. So that one is faulty, and it's unstable, yeah? That's the most unstable one we've found so far. Unstable. I suspect capacitors in that one as well, actually. Um, okay, let's uh, grab the last few. Uh, this is number six, uh, which I marked as being dead. Um, I don't see any uh, extra wire in any of these to show there's any rail is being monitored externally anyway so I'm not going to bother put the resistor on this one uh, it supposedly is dead anyway uh, so let's just try and power this up and see what it actually does and this does nothing yeah just make sure again this is quite an early one it's got the in and out but it is an ATX power supply so that is definitely faulty and it's definitely dead okay that's another one so there's just two left this is number nine um, no output. This one's monitoring the 3.3. Uh, but considering it's got no output, I'm just going to put the hard drives on and just uh, see what it does first. Yeah, so the power's off. Uh, this one doesn't have an on off switch on the back, actually. Uh, so let's see what this one actually does. Oh, no, it's not dead. It, it lit up and went back off again. Okay. Let's just connect a uh, load onto the 3.3 uh, just to see if that makes any difference to it. Yeah, so let's just. Uh, We'll connect our load in there. Again, I've got the meter. Hopefully, we'll see this flash up. But we we'll say that something happened. Yeah, that we got connection. Let's try this one again. Now it didn't power up at all. Yeah. Okay, so that one is definitely faulty. Yeah, and there's just one more to look at. Okay, and this is the last one. So this is uh, number eight. Um, Last time I tried this, I said it powers on and back off again. Uh, this has the brown wire coming into one of the orange wires on the uh, ATX20 pin, yeah? So, again, I've clipped the uh, resistor on this, put a load on that. So, I've loaded each two hard drives, the resistor on the 3.3. So, let's see if it does actually power on and back off again. Well, it made like a clock on you know it no, it didn't, and the reason it didn't is because I haven't plugged the power wheel into it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, right, let's just plug some power wheel into it. Then let's see if it powers on or not. No. Problem with my power switch. Right. Hmm. No, it doesn't power at all. Maybe it made a bit of a noise, actually, the first time. Um, let's just give that... Uh, a moment just to see if it uh, does but having said that if you power it on and powers off you should, you should power back on again you know you shouldn't have to wait really any particular you know i mean i suppose we can give it a few seconds give it the benefit of the doubt yeah <laughs> okay so let's now uh, see if that will actually power on and back off again okay so that definitely is faulty um so what we have there we have nine no we have we have seven faulty power supplies yeah we have seven faulty power supplies um i will list them on this video um so um what would you like to see repaired next yeah we've got uh we've got a few to go out there in fact one moment just hold the line one moment i have a couple more that i've uh, got since these were done one moment so yeah, I have two more that I've acquired since I did the Hall of Shame. Uh, this one's uh, 500 watt. Has the uh, six-way and the four-way, the 20-way. Uh, so I can see again there's a sense wire on the orange as a brown wire. So I've connected the resistor to this one. I've actually connected the light bulb to this. I'm expecting the light bulb to come on and dim a little bit. I have got a load on it though, so let's see. Yeah, it's powering up okay, so I'll switch the light bulb off. And now let's power this one on. Move the this other way. So this one is just fine. That's a good working one, yeah. Uh, we have one more. Okay, and this one is the last one. Uh, I've drawn a big X on this, on, on on both sides of it. So obviously it had a problem. I don't think it's the one I fixed earlier, um, but. We can try. I, I'm not going to put the light bulb on because I've obviously had this powered up before. Yeah, hence the fact I've drawn the big X on it. Um, so let's just uh, switch this on and see what this one does. Yeah, again, I've, I've connected the 3.3 load because it's monitoring 3.3, and this one powers on and powers off and powers on again. 
and that looks okay. Yeah, all the voltage is stable on that one. Yeah, that's okay. That, that's fine. I suspect this is what I've already repaired, to be quite honest. Okay, so uh, there you go. Um, I've uh, got uh, how many now? Eight. Yeah, so, no, seven. Those last two we've got. So we've got seven. So let's just have a quick glance at the seven again, and then you let me know well, what would you like me to fix next, yeah? Okay, so there we go, yeah. So number six is dead. Uh, number eight powers on straight back off again. Number 13 was very unstable, as I recall. Um, number 9 is no output, nothing coming out of it. Uh, it was probably the same as dead. Um, this one had the 5 volts and 3.3 .3 were wandering around the best. Number 5, number 9, number 5, yeah. Number 2, the 12 volts was too high. I think it was like 13 volts or something. The 5 was low, even with the right load on it. Uh, and then these two, uh, number 7 and 15, have both got the same. Uh, problem and they both got unstable 5 volt standby okay guys uh, get your votes in and um, let me know and um, let's see how many of those we can fix eh? see you soon now ciao for now